Hello students, in the previous session we studied about validating statements. We also listed some rules for checking whether a statement is true or not. Let us revise them. Rule first says if P and Q are mathematical statements then in order to show that the statement P and Q is true the following steps are followed. Step 1 show that the statement P is true. Step 2 show that the statement Q is true. Rule 2 was statement with or. If P and Q are mathematical statements then in order to show that the statement P or Q is true one should consider the following. Case 1 by assuming that P is false show that Q must be true. Case 2 by assuming that Q is false show that P must be true. Now let us discuss the third rule statements with if then. In order to prove the statement if P then Q we need to show that any one of the following case is true. Case 1 by assuming that P is true prove that Q must be true that is the direct method. Case 2 by assuming that Q is false prove that P must be false. This is contrapositive method. Rule 4 is statements with if and only if. In order to prove the statement P if and only if Q we need to show first if P is true then Q is true and second if Q is true then P is true. Now let us consider some examples to understand these. Check whether the following statement is true or not. If x y belong to z are such that x and y are odd then x into y is odd. Look into the solution let P x y belong to z such that x and y are odd Q x y is odd. To check the validity of the given statement we apply case 1 of rule 3 that is assume that if P is true then Q is true. P is true means that x and y are odd integers then x is equal to 2 m plus 1 for some integer m y is equal to 2 n plus 1 for some integer n. Thus x into y is equal to 2 m plus 1 into 2 n plus 1 which on simplification gives us 2 into 2 m n plus m plus n plus 1. This shows that x into y is odd. Therefore, the given statement is true. Suppose we want to check this by using case 2 of rule 3 then we will proceed as follows. We assume that Q is not true. This implies that we need to consider the negation of the statement Q. This gives the statement not Q product x y is even. This is possible only if either x or y is even. This shows that P is not true. Thus we have shown that minus Q implies minus P. Thus this example illustrates that to prove P implies Q it is enough to show that minus Q implies minus P which is the contrapositive of the statement P implies Q. Now let us take up one more example. Check whether the following statement is true or false by proving its contrapositive. If x y belong to z such that x y is odd then both x and y are odd. 
look into the solution. Let us name the statements as p x into y is odd and q as both x and y are odd. We have to check whether the statement p implies q is true or not. That is by checking its contrapositive statement that is minus q implies minus p. Now, minus q is it is false that both x and y are odd. This implies that x or y is even. Then x is equal to 2 n for some integer n. Therefore, x into y is equal to 2 n into y for some integer n. This shows that x into y is even that is minus p is true. Thus, we have shown that minus q implies minus p and hence the given statement is true. Now, what happens when we combine an implication and its converse? Next, we shall discuss this. Let us consider the following statements. P, a tumbler is half empty. Q, a tumbler is half full. We know that if the first statement happens, then the second happens and also if the second happens, then the first happens. We can express this fact as if a tumbler is half empty, then it is half full. If a tumbler is half full, then it is half empty. We combine these two sentences and get the following. A tumbler is half empty if and only if it is half full. Now, let us discuss another method that is by contradiction. Here, to check whether a statement P is true, we assume that P is not true that is minus p is true. Then we arrive at some result which contradicts our assumption. Therefore, we conclude that p is true. Let us look into this example to understand this method. Verify by the method of contradiction p root 7 is irrational. In this method, we assume that the given statement is false that is we assume that root 7 is rational. This means that there exists positive integers a and b such that root 7 is equal to a upon b where a and b have no common factors. Now, squaring this equation we get 7 is equal to a square upon b square which implies a square is equal to 7 b square. This implies 7 divides a. Therefore, there exists an integer c such that a is equal to 7 c. Then a square is equal to 49 c square and a square is equal to 7 b square. Hence, 7 b square is equal to 49 c square implies b square is equal to 7 c square taking 7 common on both sides that implies 7 divides b, but we have already shown that 7 divides a. This implies that 7 is a common factor of both a and b which contradicts our earlier assumption that a and b have no common factors. This shows that the assumption root 7 is rational is wrong. Hence, the statement root 7 is irrational is true. Next, we shall discuss a method by which we may show that a statement is false. The method involves giving an example of a situation where the statement is not valid. 
such an example is called a counter example. The name itself suggests that this is an example to counter the given statement. By giving a counter example, show that the following statement is false. If n is an odd integer, then n is prime. Look into the solution. The given statement is in the form if p then q. We have to show that this is false. For this purpose, we need to show that if p then minus q. To show this, we look for an odd integer n, which is not a prime number. 9 is one such number. So, n is equal to 9 is a counter example. Thus, we conclude that the given statement is false. Please note that in mathematics, counter examples are used to disprove the statement. However, generating examples in favor of a statement do not provide validity of the statement. So, students, we have learned that the following methods are used to check the validity of statements. First, the direct method. Second, contrapositive method. Third, method of contradiction. And fourth, it is using a counter example. Let us solve an example using these methods. Show that the statement p, if x is a real number such that x cube plus 4 x is equal to 0, then x is 0 is true by direct method, method of contradiction and by method of contrapositive. Now, look into the solution when we use direct method x cube plus 4 x is equal to 0 or taking x common x into x square plus 4 is equal to 0. This implies either x is 0 or x square plus 4 is not equal to 0 when x belongs to r. Second method of contradiction, let x is not equal to 0 and let it be x is equal to p where p belongs to r and p is the root of x cube plus 4 x is equal to 0. Therefore, p cube plus 4 p is equal to 0 implies p into p square plus 4 is equal to 0. p is not equal to 0. Also, p square plus 4 is not equal to 0. This implies p is equal to 0. The third method was method of contrapositive. Let x be equal to 0 is not true and x is equal to p is not equal to 0. Therefore, p cube plus 4 p is equal to 0, p being the root of x square plus 4 less than 0 or p into p square plus 4 is equal to 0. Now, p is equal to 0 also p square plus 4 is equal to 0. This implies p into p square plus 4 is not equal to 0 if p is not true. Therefore, x is equal to 0 is the root of x cube plus 4 x is equal to 0. Now, let us look at one more interesting example. Show that the statement for any real numbers a and b, a square is equal to b square implies that a is equal to b is not true by giving a counter example. Here, let us take the value of a as 1 and b as minus 1. Look, a square is equal to b square that is equal to 1, but a is not equal to b. Here, the given statement is not true. So, students, I hope you enjoyed studying this chapter on mathematical reasoning. Thank you.